Mike Kern. I'm with Adam Edmanecker. We're going to talk a little bit about a Valley basketball postseason with us and uh, maybe a quick recap on the tournament. Our tournament was in year 29, 29 straight years in St. Louis this past year and year number 30 next year. One of the longest continuous tournaments in, uh, in NSA history, really. We, we're just behind the Big East. But talk about your thoughts about the, the Valley tournament this past week and we'll delve into some postseason. Yeah, I mean, just in general, we talked all year about how this the the parity in the league and it's as wide open of a field as ever. Well, how about a five and a six seed playing in the final game? Something we've never seen in St. Louis. And and just how close the games were, right? I mean, you look at the semifinals, the two semifinals decided by a total of four points, all going down to the final second, and then a back and forth final with with Bradley storming back after a pretty big first half deficit against Northern Iowa. Really, really exciting and a, and a fun time in St. Louis. And, you know, you mentioned, Mike, what that sets up now as we're looking forward to postseason play. Obviously, the seeding coming out on Sunday, Bradley playing. They got a tough matchup, a 15, one of the lower scenes we've seeds we've seen for the Missouri Valley, playing against a Michigan State group that is going to come into the tournament with the chip on their shoulder, feeling like they were underseeded at a two, just to repeat that, underseeded at a two, right? Uh, and and so, you know, I, I think eyes also turn to, I, I was watching the other night, I was watching a Loyola recap of the Final Four run last year and just how special that was. It'll be really interesting to see once the NIT field came out, seeing Loyola going to Creighton. So you got the new uh, kid on the block in the Valley and a former Valley foe in Creighton. Can Custer and Crutwig and Towns, can they harness, can they bring together the magic that they had last year? Postseason play, you never know, but they got a shot in the NIT. Yeah, and an interesting twist on that, of course, is that's Porter Moser's alma mater. He played at Creighton and yeah. won a Valley championship with the Blue Jays back in the late 80s. Uh, you mentioned the 5-6 matchup in the league tournament. Never happened before in our 42-year history, including pre-St. Louis. So it's, it's uh, in the last four games of the tournament decided by – Two, three, three, and two, or two, three, two, two, and three points. So that's never happened in league history. So we've had an interesting tournament and an interesting postseason awaits us. Well, let's talk about the three teams that are going to postseason. By the time this airs, we'll, we'll know the Loyola result. We're taping yeah. it actually as it's occurring. But uh, Drake um, playing a game in the CIT. They're back in the postseason for a second straight year playing in that tournament. Talk a little bit about the Bulldogs on Friday with a Southern Utah matchup. Yeah, you know, I read an article, Mike, and it said, Drake headlines CIT field, and I thought, wow, I haven't I haven't seen Drake headlines a tournament in a really really long time. So you know, you you look at obviously a lot of unfortunate injuries. Nick Norton earlier in the year, DJ Wilkins before the conference tournament, Nick McGlynn within the first eight minutes in the conference tournament. So this is an injury rattled te riddled team. But wow, did they really battle in St. Louis? I think they have a shot now. And it, it, if you're if you're Coach Darren DeVries, you're looking at your group thinking, now we're playing for next year. My guys have done a great job competing. I think when you look over that field, you know, you got Kent State, you got East Tennessee State, you got some good teams in there. But I think Drake feels really good about their chances to continue to move forward. Well, and with that depleted roster, they're not playing games on back-to-back -back days anymore. Like right. at St. Louis, and that, that gives them a little bit of a bump. And they've learned how to play with a, a short bench. So we'll, we'll see. You know, they They've done some magic this year, and let's see if the magic can continue. Yeah, you know, so, Mike, it could be the basketball season's winding to a close, but to me still, this is the best week of the year. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, basketball all day long. Can't beat it. I, I couldn't agree with you more, and I'm looking forward to watching some madness. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for joining us all year, and we'll be talking to you soon. All right. Thanks, Mike.